Yeah. Hey guys, you guys doing good? Hey, hey, I just was told that we have a very special guest in uh, our midst tonight. I don't want to embarrass him at all or anything, um, but Billy Stowe came up to me and said, hey, I just want to let you know that we have a special guest here from the Ukraine. Um, and I don't know your name, my man, um, Avery. What's your friend's name? Max. Max, hey man, you doing good? Can, can you just say hey to everybody? Awesome. Thank you so much for visiting. We're so glad you're here. Um, I know your dad um, got an opportunity to just explain what was going on in your home country and what you're doing here and how you are here. And so we want to let you know that we're continuing to pray for you and your dad and the ministry that you guys are doing. I'm so grateful that you're here. And if I'm embarrassing you, I'm so sorry. Um, but I want to take a moment to just pray um, right now over the Ukraine and then we can get into it. God, thank you so much that you are a sovereign God. But Lord, right now there's just war taking place. And it seems unfair, it seems wrong, it doesn't make sense to a lot of us, but God, we know that you are still sovereign. But God, we pray tonight, we pray over everyone involved in this and we just pray that hearts would be softened, lives would be restored, and God, that you would just bring peace uh, in the Ukraine, in Russia, God, would you put a halt, would you put a stop to these evil acts, God? But Lord, we understand that we live in this fallen, sinful, broken world. And Lord, I just pray over the churches right now in Ukraine, I pray that they would be the light of the world, a city on a hill. I pray that their foundation is in you and I just pray peace over their hearts and over their minds, Lord. God, I can't imagine what they might be thinking about or going through right now, but Lord, we pray, we intercede on their behalf. We intercede on those who call themselves children of God, and we ask, Lord, that you would keep them safe and give them opportunity to share your gospel, that they would be unashamed of the gospel. And Lord, in any way that we can help through our prayers, through our finances, through goods and services, Lord, may we be given that opportunity to do so. And it's in your name we pray, amen. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. You know, when I'm I thinking actually about what's going on, you know, you, you, I've seen some, some pictures of, of just people crying, grown men crying, not understanding what's going on. And, and, and oftentimes when you see someone cry, you've gotta ask the question, are they weak or are they just passionate and genuinely just, they're just genuine about those things, right? I think a lot of times, especially in that situation, I think it's just a genuine passion and a, maybe a frustration and a confusion. But it's interesting how crying works. It's one of the most interesting things to me and how our body works. Like if we get angry, sometimes we can get so angry that we start to, our tear ducts start to get wet. You know, maybe we get so sad and our tear ducts start to get wet and we start to have tears coming from our eyes. I mean, this is kind of a weird body function, right? Like it just, it just comes from our face and it falls down. Or maybe, maybe you're just so joyful and, and these tears start coming down. And I'm gonna make a confession to you guys tonight. I, I don't know what's wrong with me and I don't know why this happens, but often when I sit down and I eat food that is really, really good, I just start crying because it's so tasty, <laughs> because it's so good. And so I sit down and, and, and I eat something and maybe I'm at a really good restaurant and I went to this place called Savore's and they had this like chef-like food and I was eating it and, and, I, and I was just crying and it was so good. And that's so weird. Like, why do I do that? I don't know. I'm not sure why that happens to me. That's so weird. But we, we often, maybe everyone here has cried before. We were babies. We see babies cry. That's a normal thing. But we don't always see grown men crying. And when we do, it's like, oh my gosh, what is happening? And maybe some of us, we cry over like really, really silly things. But my question to you tonight is, when is the last time you wept or cried because there are seven billion people in the world and a majority of those people don't know Christ. 
When was the last time that brought you to your knees? When was the last time that that broke you? Or has that ever happened? When's the last time you, you said, man, they're lost or they're confused. I just, Lord, I'm praying right now for them. It doesn't happen a lot, does it? It doesn't often take place. You see, we're in a series called Deep Dive. And we're talking about what God's word is saying and how we should respond to him and how to live in righteousness. And as we've been reading God's word, as we've been diving deep over the last six weeks in this book called Philippians, we've been discovering not only how to read God's word, but how to apply it in our lives. And tonight we're gonna learn how to respond to those who are lost. How to respond to those who know the truth of God have heard the truth of God, and you know these people, they've heard it over and over again, but they deny it over and over again. How do we respond to them? And so we're gonna open up God's word tonight. We're gonna look really deep into a couple of verses, and we're gonna go all around the Bible, and we're gonna discover what our response should be to these people. How should our reaction be? what action should take place in our lives towards those people. Would you pray with me quickly as we dive in? God, I just pray right now that your Holy Spirit would fill me. God, that you would speak through me. God, you know my week. You know what's been going on in my life. You know what's happening. You know that I'm a little scatterbrained tonight, but Lord, I just pray that you would speak through me and that the power of the word would um, just transform lives tonight, Lord. It's in your name we pray and all God's people said, Amen. Philippians 3, 18. Paul gets real here. He gets real here. He starts to cry. And so I think we need to get real with each other. And we need to get real and really realize that there needs to be an appropriate response as a believer to those who are lost. Or even more to those who recognize the truth but deny it. It says this. It says, for I have often told you and now say again with Tears that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. What he's talking about enemies there, he's talking about Judaizers. Well, what the heck is a Judaizer? Those who work for salvation, those who add to the gospel, those who say, hey, you have to do this, 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 and this on top of what the gospel says. That's wrong. These are self-righteous people. And, and actually, Larry talked about those people last week. He talked about the self-righteous and he talked about the selfish and he talked about how they're holding garbage and they're choosing garbage over actual truth. They're holding garbage over the gospel. They're surrounding themselves not with Christ, but with the world. Or maybe they're even surrounding themselves with Christ, but not surrendering to Christ. So what is our response? What should our response be? We see that Paul is crying. He's broken for these people. He's upset for these people. And he actually writes another letter to a young pastor named Timothy. Say Timothy. Say young Timmy boy. Yeah, young Timmy boy. Yeah. So <laughs> I almost said it. Young Timmy boy uh, chapter 4. <laughs> 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 5. Paul says this to him. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, that's big, their own desires, will multiply teachers for themselves because they have an itch to hear what they want to hear. They will turn away from hearing the truth and will turn aside to myths. But as for you, this is how we respond. Are you, are you listening? Are you taking notes? As for you, the believer, those who have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, but as for you, exercise what? Self-control in everything. And endure hardships. And then I love this. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. I say this all the time. You have a purpose. If you are in Christ, you have a ministry. And that ministry is to go into all the world, start first in your local community, and tell people about Jesus. That is your ministry. Whether you're in school or you're an adult leader and you run a company, your ministry is there. 
It's to tell people that you work with. It's to tell people that you go to school with. It's to tell people wherever you are about the message of the gospel that we were once enemies of God, but we can be called children of God. But as for you, so that's how we should respond. But don't we see this first part happening like a lot, like all the time? There will be a time when people won't tolerate sound doctrine. If you get on TikTok, if you get on Instagram, if you get on YouTube, there are so many people telling you that this thing is just a book of words and it has no power, but that is false. But what's crazy to me is that they're confusing you because they sound smart, because they have more viewers, because they have followers. They're twisting the word of God and they're confusing young people like yourself. Because maybe, just maybe, you don't actually read the word for yourself and you don't know what it says. And so you'll listen to the first person that sounds like they know what they're talking about. That's dangerous. That's a dangerous place to be because that's where we, it leads us to destruction. It leads us to death. It leads us to shame. If we keep reading Philippians chapter three, we see that their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame and they are focused on earthly things. A lot of these people that are spreading false truths, spreading false doctrines are doing it either to get money or to persuade you otherwise or because they're just really selfish and they think that they're setting you free but really they're just giving you more chains to bind you with that's all they're doing so what does that mean stomach what's that word stomach mean it means their appetite you see these people their god is their stomach what that means is that they crave the things of this world. They crave anything that they think about and they run after it. They have no self-discipline. They have no discipline. They just say, hmm, I want that. And then they go for it and that becomes their God. And they become quickly satisfied. There's immediate satisfaction in that. But what happens next? Your stomach eventually gets hungry again, doesn't it? And so they go to that next thing and then your stomach gets hungry again and you start to get fat, full of junk and garbage. There's no actual nutrients in their life because there's no truth, because they have traded this for a lie. But Jesus has so much more for you. He has so much more for you. Why are you listening to this garbage? Why are you listening to the lies on repeat? You see, Jesus has a life for you. He has a beautiful, abundant, great life for you. If you would just stop listening to the lies and start letting the truth set you free. You see, what's awesome is that Jesus doesn't just die for us and leave us alone. No, he, he dies, he raises from the grave, and then he says, hey, listen, I'm gonna give you a helper. I'm gonna give you a counselor. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. The same power that rose Jesus Christ from the grave can dwell within you if you accept him as your Lord and Savior. John 7 puts it this way. It says this, it says, the one who believes in me, Jesus is speaking, as the scripture has said, will have streams of living water flowing from deep within. Your stomach will not hunger again. It will not thirst again because it has streams that are flowing, living water. That reminds me of John chapter four with the woman at the well, right? And he's telling us that, and he said, this is about the spirit. Those who believe in Jesus were going to receive the spirit. But those who don't or reject that are known as enemies of the cross. And we have to watch out for those who twist the truth of the gospel. That should be a slide. We have to look out for those people. That should be a slide, Jackson. Yeah, thanks, brother. Oh, yep, yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. Enemies of the cross. We have to look out for those people. Let's watch out for those who twist the truth of the gospel. 
They take the things that are created and they say, you know what? Let's worship that. That's fine. It's okay. Romans 1 puts it this way, starting in verse 25. This is a big one. It says, they exchange the truth of God for a lie. These are people who are enemies of the cross of Christ. And they worshiped and served what has been created instead of the creator who is praised forever, amen. And then it goes on to say in verse 26, we're not gonna read that yet tonight, in 27 it talks about homosexuality. And there's a lot of people that will tell you the lie that homosexuality is not in the Bible that it says nothing about a man and a man being together, that it's wrong. And it says that there's nothing wrong with a woman and a woman being together. It actually does. Romans clearly says it. You can read it for yourself, but that's not the message right now. 1 Corinthians 6 says it. Matthew 19 says it. Jesus himself says that a man and a woman should come together, but that's not the message for tonight. If you want to know more about it, I would love to share that with you, but the thing is, we don't just judge people. We love them, and sometimes they have to be reminded, hey, Jesus has more for you than your sexual identity. That's a different message for a different night. But verse 28 says this. It says, and because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a corrupt mind. In chapter, tw- in chapter one, it says, God delivered them over to a corrupt mind three times. Three times. Corrupt mind. It starts with the mind. It's already overflowing from the heart because the heart is deceitful above all things so that they do what is not right. They are filled with all unrighteousness. You ready to see the characteristics, the adjectives of those as enemies of the cross? I can look at these things and I can say, yes, that was once me. That was me, all of these things. And you know what? I have to fight against these things every day. And it says this, they are filled with all unrighteousness, evil, greed, and wickedness. They are full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, and malice. They are gossips. They talk about people behind their back. They spill the tea. They're slanders, God-haters, arrogant, proud, boastful. This one's big. Innovators of evil. They just create evil. They just come up with ways to be more evil. It's just disgusting. They're disobedient to parents. Ooh, that'll preach. That one's tough. I was there once too. Senseless, untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. Verse 32. Although they know God's just sentence, and it explains that just sentence, that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. That is happening in your world today. That is happening on repeat and you constantly are hearing this and that's probably why you have anxiety. That's probably why you're tired all the time. I ask you guys, how are you doing? Oh, I'm so tired. Yeah, I bet. Because you're having to fight against this real spiritual warfare and you haven't talked about it. You haven't sat down with your small group and said, guys, I'm struggling because this world is tough. Or actually, you know what? This is me. Can you help me? We were once here too. But students, we can't just cry for the lost. We have to carry them to the cross. We can't just cry for the lost. We have to carry them to the cross. And I can remember the first time that I ever actually wept over the lost, over people who are broken. And it's sad because it took me to go on a mission trip out of this country to this place called Africa, Ghana, a capital called Accra. And I went when I was in 12th grade, went when I was some of y'all's age. And I was walking through the streets and it was actually Ramadan and see the Islamic faith, they have this month where they decide to fast for 30 days. They don't eat or drink from sunup to sundown. That's actually a Jewish thing too. See, they're twisting the truth. They're making it look good. They're making it look almost like truth. And they do this so that they can get closer to their lowercase God, lowercase G, God. Their false God. This is a false religion. And I know this because as I was there walking through this street, one of the busiest streets in the capital, 
and it was Ramadan. And so people travel from all over the nation to go to the capital. And they put speakers everywhere down the street. And I was walking down the street. And as I'm walking down the street with some of my other friends, some of the other people that went with me, I'm hearing these Islamic prayers. I don't understand that their language. I don't know what the language even was because it wasn't the local language there. It was some other language. And as I'm hearing this, not even understanding it, I start tearing up. And we're walking and we're pushing through crowds. And I just start to weep because I see so many people listening to the lies and believing them. I'm I'm walking through and the people around me look at me and they're tearing up too. Because there was a loud speaker, there was a loud voice saying, you don't need God. And it was almost like God was telling me, I could just feel it, that he was like, this is not the gospel. This is not of me. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. When's the last time that happened to you? Because this this looks like your social media feed. It does, I know it does. That's why I got rid of mine because I was done. I was like, I can't anymore. I can't hear the lies of the enemy. I can't handle that spiritual warfare that I don't have to actually handle. I can take Instagram off my phone. I can take TikTok off my phone. And what I can do is I can go to people face to face and I can say, hey, I'm not crying for you anymore, but I'm gonna carry you to the cross. I'm not just gonna cry for the lost, but I'm gonna carry them to the cross. I'm gonna say, hey, I remember I was there once too. I was once lost, confused, anxious, broken, darkened, blind, upset. But let me tell you something, Jesus has so much better for you. Crying is a weird thing, but it helps us see what's really on the inside. What kind of things do you cry over? Are they things of the world? or are they because of the world? Philippians 3.20 says this. It tells us how we should respond. It says our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly wait for a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's hope. That's what we fix our eyes on. Jesus, the author, the perfecter of our faith because we are what? Citizens of heaven, not of this world. Colossians 3, 2 says, look to the things above, not to the things of this world. Romans 12, 2 says, don't conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Remember, God delivered them over to a corrupt mind. It's time to ask Jesus to renew your mind. He will transform the body of your humble condition into the likeness of his glorious body. How good is that? That's a future hope by the power that enables him to subject everything to himself. Why does he have that power? Because in Matthew 28, verse 18, he says, all authority has been given to me. Now go tell people about how they can become children of God. God, don't just sit there and cry and wait for a miracle. Be a part of the miracle. I believe that you can actually be a part of that. And you know what was cool? In Africa, we, we were walking and I said, God, give me, give me somebody to talk to right now. Just have them just pull me out of the crowd and let me talk to them. What happened? Someone pulled me and said, do you have the message of Jesus? I said, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. I've come here to tell you about Jesus, that he loves you and he cares about you. Their whole family accepted Christ. I got to pray for them in their home. Why? Because I was aware of the spiritual warfare. I was aware of the lies of the world, the lies of the enemy. You can have that opportunity here. It doesn't have to be in Africa. You see, I was really convicted because when I was over there, I was like, what the heck? Why am I fulfilling my ministry more over here than I am in Wilmington, North Carolina, where I live all the time, where I know the culture, where I understand people? Why am I so afraid? What is holding me back? You know what was holding me back? 
wasn't living as a citizen of heaven. I was living as a citizen of Wilmington, North Carolina, and I cared so much about what my friends thought of me. I didn't wanna be an outcast, which actually made me an outcast. It made me feel insecure about who I was. But you see, as a citizen of heaven, you are secure. God has a plan for you. It's a good plan. So we've been talking about enemies of the cross of Christ for a lot. And all throughout this message, I've been hinting, what does it mean to be a citizen of heaven? Well, I have two things for you, two things to jot down. Deny the world and its false gods. Stop satisfying your stomach. Stop satisfying your stomach. It's time to renew your mind. It's time to let Jesus, the Holy Spirit, work in and through you to renew you, to make you new and to give you that purpose so that you can walk in Him. Secondly, commit a life to Jesus and let His Spirit lead you as you help lead others to Jesus. Listen, this is our only time to evangelize the world. This is it. We're not promised tomorrow. This is your day. Because whether you're going to hell or whether you're going to heaven, we will no longer be doing evangelism. We will no longer be able to tell people about God. And so now's the time to do it because there will be no need to tell people about God because we will be in his presence. The last book of the Bible, Revelation, in the last chapter says this. It's actually the second to last chapter. It says, he will wipe away every tear. Every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Grief, crying, and pain will be no more because the Previous things have passed away. This world that we're living in is going to rust. Moth is going to destroy it. It's going to become dirt. But there's three things that last forever, faith, hope, and love. And of the greatest of these is love. And so I've got to ask you the question, who do you love? Who do you love? The world or God? James 4, 8, where does your loyalty lie? The world or God? How are you not only loving God, but loving others, not just crying for the lost, but carrying them to the cross? Maybe some of you tonight, you're like, yep, I need the gospel. I need to accept the message of Jesus, but I just don't know how. I just don't know how or what I'm supposed to do. Well, I praise God that you're here tonight. There's a reason you're here tonight. There's a reason you're sitting in that very chair right now. There's a reason you're looking at me. There's a reason you're paying attention to me right now is because God, the Holy Spirit is working in you and he's saying, hey, I'm here for you. I love you. He's knocking at the door. Won't you answer it? It's time to accept that he is the creator. Stop worshiping the creation because it's gonna fail you. It's time to worship the creator. If that's you tonight, tell somebody. Tell a friend, tell a small group leader, let us know that you wanna accept Jesus and we'll help you walk through that. Or you can simply do what scripture tells us to do. Confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for your love. Your undeserving love, Jesus, thank you so much. God, we understand that sometimes we just walk throughout life apathetic with apathy. No more, God, no more. Would you give us a heart and a passion and a desire, not only 
for you, but for your word and for the people that you have called us to evangelize to, the people that you have called us to share the message of you, God, to share the message of the gospel. God, would you just give us the, the boldness, the excitement to share what has transformed our lives. God, would you burden every believer's heart in this room right now? God, would you put a burden for the lost? Would we fulfill your ministry that you started 2000 years ago when you said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near because we know that you will return and we pray, Lord, that we have done our best for you. And God, we know that we will fail you, but God, we repent and we're grateful for your forgiveness and we praise you for that. But God, tonight, would someone make a decision to follow you for the first time ever? Tonight, would someone hear your gospel and respond? Would this message not just fall on deaf ears, but fall in soil that is fertile? And would your Holy Spirit just grow that seed of salvation in someone's heart tonight? It's in your name we pray and all God's people said, amen.